John chapter 4. And let's start at verse 5. <laughs> so he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of the ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. Now we know that the number six represents man. Amen. Amen. A woman of Samaria came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. They must have missed that one again, huh? <laughs> Where are you guys going, man? <laughs> then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Now, isn't that powerful? So, you know, one of the things I want to express right now, Jesus came as a Jew. Hello? That's the bottom line. I mean, I've been all over places, and I've seen pictures of Jesus in all different kinds, all different cultures. He chose to come as a Jew. Now, it's relevance in one aspect, but it's irrelevance in another. It's relevance because we acknowledge that he chose the Jews, amen, to declare the gospel and to bring the truth. The other thing is, is that when they rejected him, he went to the Gentiles. Amen? So he was not only the God of the Jews, but now he was the God of the Gentiles also. But the powerful thing is, is says, Jesus said, give me a drink. What he was trying to do is cause her to ask him for a drink. Okay? See, there was something common that they had there, water. So she was a little like, wait a minute, why are you asking me this? I'm a Samaritan and you Jews have nothing to do with us. Well, he broke the ice there, didn't he? Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who, get, who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. <laughs> if you'd have really understood, if you'd have gotten it, you'd be asking me for something different. Living water, not just natural water. The woman said to her, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Yeah, she was in the flesh, right? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? And Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. Whatever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water, springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water. <laughs> give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. She said, Forget it. I don't want to drink this anymore. I want something else. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. And a woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You have well said, I have no husband. For you have been shacking up with five other guys before, and you've had five other husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband, and that you spoke truly. She was in fornication. What was he trying to do? Cause her to repent so she could get some of this water. Amen. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, Believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming and now is when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. The word spirit means breath and truth is who you know. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. Everyone say the Father, the Father. is seeking me. When I, worship him. when I worship him. For God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Man, she got direct contact. One of the things he expressed so importantly was worship. And tonight's tape is worship. Now we've talked about worship over and over because this is the ministry of worship and those who worship him, 
must worship him in truth and spirit. Worship is a representation of whether you know him or not. Whether you really know him. It separates the religion and relationship arena. There are people who start out worshiping God and backslide and stop worshiping him. They get caught up by the letter instead of caught up in the spirit. Worship. There's a correlation between drinking and worship. And you know what? You cannot live without water. You can live without food, you know. But you can't live without water. Hello? <laughs> you cannot live without water. And you and I cannot live without drinking of the Spirit. And that's through worship. Worship. John chapter 7 and verse 37. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying... Now, he stood and cried out, saying... I think he was trying to get their attention. If Jesus stood and cried out, saying something, it was very important. <laughs> if anyone what? Thirst. Oh, another correlation. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and what? What was he trying to do? Give him living water. But the one thing that we must maintain is the thirst. One thing the devil wants to do is quench your thirst. And it prevents you and stops you from worshiping. You know, many people say, well, you know, I have a hard time trying to get in the presence of God. God's presence is here. You know, where's God's presence? Where are you? The reason why people have a hard time getting in God's presence is because they lose focus. That's all it is. It's focus. They begin to look at everything else, me, myself, and I, what i got to do, what I've done, how I'm going to do it, whatever. And they miss in God's presence. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. And Jesus said, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the Scriptures have said, out of his heart will flow rivers of what? Living water. So let me tell you, we're supposed to be a fountain of living water. Rivers of living water are supposed to flow out of me and you. We're supposed to be like, you know, when you get thirsty and you're walking down the park and you see a water fountain. Yeah, man, whoa. Well, you're supposed to be that way. You're supposed to be a light and a salt where people are drawn onto you. That's what God wants us to be. Rivers of living water. People get dry real easy. They begin to look to other areas to get fulfilled and drink. Work, you know, relationships, all kinds of projects all kinds of other things. You know, it's amazing because some people are really afraid to seek God in His fullness, in His fullness, because they may get healed. Amen. Amen. They may get delivered. There's a lot of people on disability and all kinds of other stuff. Some of them do not want to get healed. Believe me, I've spoken to some of them. They don't want to get healed. And there are those who are seeking God who want to get healed. And God's going to do it in His way, isn't He? Yes. However, he's going to do it. Amen? Amen? But there are some who just rather catch the check and say, that sounds good, I'll play religion for a while, and that's that. Amen. But then there are those who really want to seek God for healing. And let me tell you, as you continue to seek him and worship him, you'll find healing comes sometimes in bits and pieces and chunks and sometimes instantaneously. Amen. But you've got to want it, and you've got to stay thirsty for his presence. Amen? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Let's go on. But this he spoke concerning the what? The Spirit. The Spirit, the Spirit is his presence. Whom those believing in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Therefore many from the crowd, when they heard this saying, said, Truly this is the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Will Christ come out of Galilee? Yeah. Galilee, thank you. Yeah. Has not the scripture said that the Christ comes from the seed of David and from the town of Bethlehem where David was. So there was what? Division among the people because of him. Now, some of them wanted to take him, but no one laid hands on him. Now listen, as you become a worshiper, you're going to find that you're going to have resistance. Not only are you going to have resistance from the devil, but through others who are truly not worshipers. They're going to criticize you. They're going to look at every fault they can because they're associating with the spirit of accusation. They're not associating with the spirit of truth where there's freedom. God is seeking 
true worshipers. The Father. See, that brings a relationship, doesn't it? The Father is looking for those who will worship Him in truth and in spirit. The Father. I can't imagine. You know, if Jesus walked in this room right now, we'd all be going like, whoa. We'd want to worship Him no matter what. But yet the Bible says when two or more are gathered together in His name, He's in the room. Yes. You know what the problem is? Because some of them are still kernelly run instead of spirit run. There's a difference. Yes. There is a difference. See, even though you have the Spirit, hello, you must make the choice to walk in the Spirit. Yes. Yes. Just because you have the Spirit and pray in tongues means, doesn't mean you're walking in the Spirit. You still have a choice to walk in the Spirit. You must make a conscious effort to walk in the Spirit. Does everybody understand that? Amen. Amen. You must make a conscious effort to hear His voice and receive His correction Amen. and stop rebuking the Spirit when He corrects us and blaming the devil. There's a difference. There's a difference in a relationship when you worship God. It's our responsibility to maintain thirst our responsibility. There's a lot of people who can quote scriptures inside and out. They can come and hold their hands up for a couple songs and sit down and think they've done their best. Mm -hmm. It's because they really don't know him. Because if you really know him, you'll love him. And if you really know him and you really love him, you'll worship him because you worship everything you love. Yeah, worshipers always seem to have a cause. They cause division when they go in those religious places. You know, Jesus' main problem with demonic activities was the religious demons. In fact, they're the ones that killed him. He didn't even bother with them. He just rebuked them, called them hypocrites, and walked away. He said, your father is from hell, and my father is from heaven. <laughs> it was real simple. He said, you go around making big prayers at every corner. You wear nice robes, and you sit in a nice restaurant. But you put your burdens on other people because you don't tell them the truth. They weren't worshipers, were they? There were those who have a form of godliness but deny the power. The power is in worship. You and I cannot be who he wants us to be until we get the anointing and the power of the Spirit of God and learn how to maintain that anointing through worship. Amen. Worship. Oh, hallelujah. Go to Matthew 5. Let me share something with you. There is going to be such a wave of resistance from darkness that if you're not in the Spirit, you'll be pushed out. It's already begun, and it's going to increase greatly. It's going to be a wind that's going to flow through of darkness that's going to push people right out, right off the rock, yeah. if they're not attached to them. Yeah. And the only way you can stay attached to them is in the Spirit. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. And the purpose of it is, is to expose, because God is going to expose those who don't worship Him in truth and in spirit. And as they become exposed, his hope is that they will come to repentance and get back in position. Amen? Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Matthew 5 and verse 6. Would you read it with me? <laughs> blessed. Everybody say blessed. 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 Say it again. Blessed. blessed. Man, you know what blessed means? Divine favor. Amen. Blessed. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Well, what are you going to be filled with? God's presence, His Spirit. So you and I must maintain a thirst and a hunger. And if you lose it, then you better go pray. I don't care if you have to fast, whatever you got to do. You need to go get it. TV will not fulfill your thirst and hunger. Hello? Playing sports will not fulfill your thirst and hunger. Working overtime will not fulfill that thirst and hunger. Looking for that bonus <laughs> will not fulfill that thirst and hunger. Looking for that spouse will not fulfill that thirst and hunger. You know why people have problems with marriages? Because they're not right. Hello? Because they need to be an example to one. But if they would take time in the presence of God and worship Him and do what they're supposed to be doing. Their marriages, no matter what way, would be established. No one said it's going to be simple. But you know what? You wouldn't be affected if you're walking in the Spirit. <laughs> Amen. Amen. 
you be taking care of God, God be taking care of your spouse. <laughs> That's why we call ministering to the Lord. Amen. That's worship. Samuel was one who ministered to the Lord. David ministered to the Lord. The great men and women of God learned how to minister to the Lord in worship. They didn't go, they didn't, they didn't make a choice. Let's see, uh, today I can't worship the Lord because I really don't feel like it. Oh, I'm just too tired, you know, I really worked hard today. Resistance. You know, you need to tell the devil, resistance is futile, get behind me. Do you ever notice that when you pick up a Bible, when it's time to come to Bible study, all of a sudden this spirit of heaviness comes on you and you get real sleepy? Man. And the devil tells you, why don't you go get a cup of coffee? If I just had a cup of coffee. You now, if you just prayed in the Spirit and started worshiping the Lord a little bit, you get quickened. Amen. That's what the Holy Spirit says. At, quicken me, Lord. Yeah. David said, quicken me. I asked that every morning, quicken me. I start praying in the Holy Ghost, thanking Him. You know, it's just a ploy of the devil to make you go to material things instead of the real thing. Ain't nothing like the real thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, don't mind me tonight. I'm, I'm joy. I'm, I'm not. Hallelujah. hallelujah. So I got to say. Hallelujah. My daddy came and touched me. It only takes a touch. Just a touch. Just a little breath. Remember, Jesus breathed on his disciples. He said, receive the Holy Spirit. He breathed on them. What they doing? Remember when Jesus was getting ready to be taken off? What did they do when he left? They worshipped him. They went in the synagogue and worshipped him. He didn't go. <laughs> he sent his spirit. Oh, to God be the glory. Revelation 21. A lot of things happen when you worship the Lord. Now, we have a spiritual warfare tape. It's called uh, Spiritual War Tape Number 7, Praise and Worship. And it talks about a lot of warfare and what goes on as you praise and worship. I'm not going to go into all of that tonight, but I would suggest that you might want to get that tape and listen to it. It's very powerful about spiritual warfare, praise and worship. Okay? Amen. Air attack. F-14s and stealth and so forth. Praise God. Uh, Revelation 21 and verse 5, are you with me? Okay, let me get there. <laughs> Glory to God. Verse 5, let's read it together. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Whoa, you think God's making something new? Yes. Amen. He's making all things new in me and you. Yes. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Is he true and faithful? Yes. Oh, hallelujah. And he said to me, It is done. Hey, he said he's, it's done. What's the problem? You just got to get in position, right? It's done, man. What you worried about? <laughs> I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who was. Thirst. Wow. Got to maintain that thirst. He's going to give it freely. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. So, what is he saying? Listen, you got to drink to overcome. That's why people don't overcome. Their focus is in other places. They can't really worship the Lord in truth and in spirit because they're too caught up in themselves. They're not willing to lay and cast their cares upon the Lord and get released. Hello? He who overcomes shall inherit all things and I'll be his son and I'll be his God and he shall be my son. My son. But the cowardly, hello, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexual, immoral, sorcerers, which means drug users, idolaters and all what? Liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the what? Second death. death. Hmm. Staying thirsty will overcome the world. Worldly thirst. You're fighting sometimes for what thirst? You're fighting for what arena you want to drink from. Worldly thirst or godly thirst? Philippians chapter 3. And the word says that when the flood of the enemy comes in, lift up the praise. When the spirit of heaviness comes, put on a garment of praise. Why? Because as you praise and worship the Lord, light is actually coming out of you. So is darkness. 
first the darkness, then the light. <laughs> That's why it's a little rough getting started. It's like kicking a Harley without an electric start. What you're saying is, come out, come out, come out, come out. <laughs> come out, 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 come out. The next thing you know, you're cruising, man. Praise God, you're in overdrive. The light's flying out of you and the demons are running like hell. Glory to God. <laughs> oh, you're so good, Lord. Did you ever notice that in his presence there's fullness of joy? <laughs> Glory to God. Philippians chapter 3. You can remember that next time you want to kickstart, right? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Read with me starting in verse 1. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. For me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for, for you it is safe. In other words, he's repeating the same thing. Come on, you ain't got it yet? <laughs> What's the matter with you? Come out, come out, come out, come out. <laughs> you better go kick that Harley over, man. Beware of what? Dogs. Dogs. Beware of evil workers. Same thing. Beware of mutilation. Whoa. What are they trying to do? Mutilate the ways of God. Hello? They're trying to distort. They're trying to bring confusion. They're trying to prevent you from getting in God's presence. That's why Jesus said, be wary uh, of the uh, leaven of the Pharisees. They thought they had the Pharisees that turned to baking. No, they were not bakers. Amen? They meant the evilness of what they were preaching. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 3, read it with me. For we are the circumcision who what? Worship God in the Spirit. Rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Let me share something with you. Those who don't worship have confidence in the flesh. You know, that's considered dry land. And the Bible says that when a devil comes out of an individual, he's seeking dry land. Hello. Some of us may have picked up somebody else's demon. Yes, they have a right to dry land. That's why we try to get everyone to worship. Do you ever notice sometimes in the beginning of worship, that fight? Hello? Sometimes there's that fight. It's like on a, what do you call those, bull rider? You got a demon that's on you, just won't shake off yet? Bunk, bunking broncos or whatever. Bucking broncos, right? You just won't come off yet. You're struggling. In fact, you, you're like, you, the devil starts telling you, man, we got to go to worship service again. Man, I'm tired. I'm all of this stuff. And, you know, I just can't wait till the service is over. You have a demon. <laughs> well, I just don't believe that stuff. Of course, you have to call a religious demon. I read my Bible. I do my prayers. But do you worship? Do you drink? Remember, you can't live without living water. You can't live without living water. You know, as the Spirit was giving me this teaching today, I was making music at the same time. Of course, I didn't get this teaching till later on. I was trying to get to it early this morning, but things are always happening. So around 3 o'clock, I finally started getting some of it, and the Holy Spirit put this music together for us specifically tonight. Because we don't usually play out this, you know, some parts of it, but praise God. So it says, For we are the circumcision who worship God in the Spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no what? Confidence in the flesh. Remember, if you're resisting worshiping the Lord, you have confidence in your flesh. And you don't know it. Because deception is Satan's greatest what? Weapon. And what's his power? Fear. Some people are afraid to come up for prayer because they're afraid what might be revealed. Amen? What if he sees what I've been doing? Don't be afraid what I see. You better be concerned what he sees. <laughs> Hello? Uh, we can become foolish flesh creatures. Oh, hallelujah. Worship. What is worship? Worship is reverent devotion to God our Creator. 
Oh, hallelujah. Reverent devotion. It's a representation of respect and honor and adoration. When the captain comes in the room, we stand at attention. Amen. We salute him. Amen. And when the king of glory comes in the room, you bow down to him. No bucking, but bowing. Amen. Amen. Worship is reverent devotion to God as our creator. It's a representation of respect and honor and adoration. Gratefulness of who he is, what he's done, and what he's going to do. Amen. It's expressed reverence. That's what worship is. Expressed reverence. Worship is the only way that you can really truly minister to the Lord. Worship. When we gather together to worship, we are ministering to the Lord. Reverent devotion to God as our, our creator, respect and honor, adoration, gratefulness of who he is and what he's done, expressed reverence. That's what worship is, expressed reverence. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. When there's an opportunity to worship, worship. When I don't feel like it. Praise God, that's when you really worship. That's when it counts. It doesn't count when you feel like it. <laughs> That's when it really counts, man, is when you don't feel like it. Because you know what you're doing? You're mortifying your flesh. You're taking dominion. You're saying to the devil, <coughs> loose me. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Genesis 12 and verse uh, something. 7. Seven and eight. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said to your descendants, I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. In the Old Testament, one of the representations of worship, especially in Abram's time, was they built altars and they made sacrifices unto the, God, unto the Lord. That was a representation or expression of worship. And he moved from there to the mountain east of Bithel, and he pitched his tent with Bithel on the west and Ah on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. So there was an area where he was building an altar as a form of worship. And that's where he would call on the name of the Lord. You know, so many times God will speak to you in part in you as you worship. You may not hear it right away, but he's impressing in you something. And as you settle down in worship and you sense his presence and his impression, he'll speak to us because finally the garbage is like, you know, getting showered. And we've picked up so much stuff from the day that we've got all this kind of worldliness on us because we're like light bulbs, right? We're the light and light bulbs pick up dust. And the light doesn't shine too good until it gets a little polished. So as you worship the Lord, the Holy Spirit comes and cleanses you, fills you, brings you clarity so you can hear. Amen. Amen. And it lasts for a couple of days. Depends on what area you're at. You know, it's a time to get recharged. We're like ever-ready batteries. Eternal batteries, right? And you know that little uh, rabbit that beats that drum? It finally dies out, doesn't it? And what's happening is darkness is drawing energy from you. They're trying to drain you. And if you allow that to happen long enough, you will seek the worldly ways to get energized. Hello? That's why it's important in fellowship. You know, one of, I heard a preacher preaching the other day, and it really blew my mind because he hit it. He said there's such a spirit of independence that's causing separation in the body of Christ. There's such a spirit of independence. People are not being sent. They're leaving. There's a difference. Starting ministries when God's not ordained them to. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> but anyways, <laughs> hallelujah. So we see here that Abram in the Old Testament, uh, one of the forms of worship was building an altar and sacrifices, wasn't it? Exodus 25 and 1 through 9. Then the Lord spoke to Moses. Now he spoke to Abram. Abram built, started building altars, and he spoke to Moses. He was going, God wanted to dwell with man. So 
So he told Moses, he said, speak to the children of Israel that they bring me an offering. God likes an offering. Everyone here likes an offering. Everyone likes to receive something. He said, from everyone who gives it willingly, with his heart, you shall take my offering. That's why sometimes you've got to fight to mortify that flesh. Then you can truly give that willing offering. Now, will means choice, doesn't it? <clears throat> so you and I have a choice to make every time. <clears throat> and this is the offering which you shall take from them, gold, silver, and bronze. Man, if we asked for that today, they'd call us thieves. <laughs> My God, you're all for money. <laughs> Look what they asked for them, gold. Okay, everybody, bring your gold in, bring your silver in, and bring your bronze in. This is what they asked for, right? Blue, purple, scarlet thread, fine linen, goat's hair, ram skins, dyed red, badger skins, and acacia wood. Oil for the light and spices for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense. Onyx stones and stones to be set in the ephod and the breastplate. And let them make me a sanctuary, a sacred place, that I may dwell among them. According to all I show you, that is the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all its furnishings just as you shall make it. So the Lord was telling them, here's another, listen, we're going to come to another level of worship. Now they had altars. Now he was going to start to bring them certain rituals. He was going to cleanse them more where they could come in from the outer courts to the holy place and where the priest could come into the holy of holies for the offering and the covering of the sins of the nation once a year. Okay? so that God could still dwell with them. So there was a place where God was beginning to dwell with mankind and he was expressing, here's another way of worship. Everybody got it? Of course, he's always improving worship, isn't he? Go to Exodus 34, 10 through 17. And he said, Behold, I make a covenant. Wow. Before all you people, I will do marvels such as not been seen in all the earth, nor in any nation, and all the people among whom you are shall see the work of the Lord, for it is an awesome thing that I will do for you. Now the Lord is saying, I'm going to do an awesome thing. Now this was right after the tabernacle, right? This is where he's building the tabernacle. Now he's making covenant with his children. Worship is a representation of maintaining covenant. Everybody got it? It's a, it's a representation of maintaining covenant with God. Because you're, if you're maintaining relationship, you're maintaining covenant, aren't you? If you lose that relationship, you begin to break some of that covenant yourself. You begin to fall away from the promises of God. Because the devil comes and steals, doesn't he? Isn't that his job? Well, see, he's exposed in light, but he's hidden in darkness. Everybody got it? So where there's deception, that's how he has access to you. Oh, hallelujah. Observe what I have commanded you this day. Behold, I am driving out from you <clears throat> the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Perizzite, the Addictite, the Pervertite, the Hivite, <laughs> the Jesuite, the Lustite, the Fleshite, <laughs> the Pornoite, <laughs> the Nicotinite. Hello? The afflicted light, <laughs> the infirmity light. <laughs> Take heed to yourselves, lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land or the world where you are going, lest it be a snare in your midst. But you shall destroy their altars. Hello? You shall destroy their altars. Break their sacred pillars and cut down their wooden images. For you shall worship no other god. For the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land. And they play the harlot with their gods and make sacrifice to their gods. And one of them invites you and you eat of their, his sacrifice. And you take of his daughter for your sons and his daughters. Play the harlot with their gods and make your sons play the harlot with their gods. You shall make no molded gods for yourselves. That's so why he says, come out from among them and be separate. Then I will be your God. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. 
Worship is obedience in honor of his covenant between God and man or God and you. Worship is a representation of op for op sacrifices. There's always a sacrifice in worship. You sacrifice when you worship. God honors that. Now, he's not just interested in your sacrifice, right? He's interested in your obedience. But sometimes obedience is a representation of sacrifice, isn't it? Amen? Now, we talked about the tabernacle. We know that there's the outer, the holy place, and the holy of holies, the, the three chambers. And you've got to be careful because some of this alternative music that we're listening to will just keep you in the outer courts. Sometimes people listen to more alternative music than they do worship music. And you know what happens? They're not changing. But I'm listening to Christian music. Not all Christian music brings you in God's presence. How many times do you want to hear the message? Now it's time to meet the messenger. Amen? It's called alternative. I think it's alternative. It's an excuse from worshiping God. Well, I'll just listen to it for a while. No, there's a difference. There's music that will keep you in the outer court, and there's music that will bring you in the Holy of Holies, where in His presence you'll change. Psalm 100, let's read it together. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. You're the lands now. It's a shout to the Lord, doesn't it? You know, it's amazing when people say, well, let's give reverence to God. Everybody be quiet for a minute. I mean, there's a time when, you know, yeah. but, you know, they, they want to, it's like, well, let, let's pray for someone, but let's be quiet, you know. A moment of silence. Yeah. Well, you're in my thoughts. Oh, wonderful. Keep me in your prayers, not your thoughts. Lift the name to the Lord, not the thought to the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. We get cards from people saying, oh, you're, you're in my thoughts. Praise God. I want to write them back. Put me in your prayers, man. <laughs> Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with what? Amen. Nothing worse than a miserable servant. Amen. If you're miserable, don't tell nobody you're a Christian. Go home, worship the Lord, till the oil of gladness overtakes you and you become joyful. Yes. Jesus was happy. He was never miserable. In fact, he laughed. He had a great time. The only time he was silent is when he was being crucified, when he was being tormented. He was silent. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Hallelujah. Knowing that the Lord, he is God. And you are not. <laughs> it is he who has made us, not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter in his gates with what? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. And into his courts with what? Pray. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endures to all generations. Praise God. We see now that there's a new transition. There's a transition going on from the altar and the tabernacle. Now there's a transition of praise. Praise. Now you become the instrument of praise. Amen? Hebrews 13. In fact, the New Covenant and New Testament is a representation of the celebration, isn't it? We're, we're joyful and thankful of his coming and that he came and he's coming again. Hebrews 13. Well, how's your day? Well, I'm all right. Go to your closet and worship the Lord till you get right, <laughs> till you get blessed. Well, I just don't feel like it. And you're still led by your flesh, your feelings? Forget it. Thou shalt not have no gods before us. Don't let your feelings become your God. He is not the God of feeling. He is the God of truth. The feelings you want is joy. Hello? Peace. Hallelujah. Righteousness. Praise God. Hebrews 13. And verse 15. Therefore by him... Let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. Does everybody see that? Continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. Some people just, they get really irritated when they always say something to me. I say, to God be the glory. Praise the Lord. What am I doing? I'm constantly offering up sacrifice to the Lord. I'm offering praise to Him. He's the one that did it. Therefore, by Him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of what? 
our lips giving thanks to his name. You know, your lips are now the altar of God. Your lips are now the altar of God. That's where the sacrifice is, isn't it? But do not forget to do good and to share, for with such sacrifices, God is what? Well pleased. Hallelujah. He's well pleased. New covenant, a sacrifice of praise with our lips, our mouth, and our breath. Hallelujah. Don't kill anybody. Don't make sure it's clean breath. You know? We want to make sure they get slain in the spirit, right? Not passed out by someone's breath. John 9, verse 28. Now, there was a guy that was blind. Jesus heals him. He goes to the Pharisees, and they're trying to steal his healing. This is when he's in front of them. They, they said to him, then they reviled him. This is the guy that got healed and said, you are his disciples, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spoke to Moses as for this fellow. We do not know where he is from. They're talking about Jesus. Then the man answered and said to him, this is the guy that got healed. He said, why, this is a marvelous thing that you do not know where he is from. Yet he has opened my eyes. In other words, he was telling the Pharisees, where you been? How come you don't know where this guy is? He's going around healing people. And that's all you're doing is bringing people in bondage, you religious demons. He said, this is marvelous. In verse 31, now, now we know that God does not hear sinners. But if anyone is a what? Worshiper of God and does his will, he what? He hears him. It's if, he, if he's a worshiper and does his will. Since the world began, it has been unheard of that anyone opened the eyes of one who was born blind. This guy was born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered and said to him, You were completely born in sins. And are you teaching us? <laughs> they were upset. Like they weren't born in sin, right? And they cast him out. <laughs> Get out. That's what happens when God touches people. You know, all those religious demons can't stand you. You're too zealous. You're, you have too much of God's love. And you've got revelation knowledge. You've been baptized in the Holy Ghost. You're speaking that funny language. You don't take no garbage. You're a threat to them because you expose them. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of God? And they answered and said, Who is he, Lord? that I may believe in him. And Jesus said, you have both seen him and it is he who is talking with you. Then he said to him, Lord, I believe. And what did he do? He worshipped him. Oh, real believers worship. Followers worship. Followers worship. Don't tell somebody you're a follower if you're not a worshiper. You'll know a believer and how close they are to God when you see how they worship. Not just a form of worship, but worship from the heart. They go after him. Oh, hallelujah. God does not hear sinners, but worshipers, right? Oh, hallelujah. Let's go to Revelation chapter 4. Let's see what they do in the throne room. Now, we want to bring the throne room to us, don't we? Hallelujah. And verse 2. John said, Immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a, thorn, a throne set in heaven. <laughs> and one sat on the throne. He was getting rid of his thorn. And he who sat there was like a jasper and sardius and stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. Around the throne were 24 thrones. And on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white robes and they had crowns of gold on their heads. And from the throne proceeded lightning and thunders and voices. Seven lamps of five of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Before the throne there was a sea of glass like crystal, and in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes in front and in back. This is the throne room of God. The first living creature was like a lion. The second creature was like a calf. The third was like a face of a man and the fourth was like a flying eagle. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within, and they did not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, and who is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders 
fall down before him. This is worship. Who sits on the throne and worship him. Who lives forever and ever and casts their crowns before the, Lord, the throne saying, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things and by your will they exist and were created. That's powerful. That's powerful. Oh, hallelujah. Go to Proverbs 18. That's in the throne room. We want to bring the throne room of God in our presence. If the Father is searching those who are willing to worship Him in truth and spirit, do you think the whole crew comes? Amen. Amen. Oh, man, I had a vision one day in worship, and they showed up. And they were above. I was in this place in Ashland, Virginia. And I was worshiping the Lord, and it was like this, uh, I don't know if you want to call it, I don't, it was like a platform that just showed up, and there was angels all around it, and the throne, and the glory of God, and, and all of like these colors and whatever. And I saw one of the angels take this silver like pitcher and begin to pour it, and was pouring out. And as he began to pour out, it, it came on me, and it came, started pouring out all over. It was like liquid uh, gold. But then it was like a water of refreshing water too. But it was like as we began to continue to worship and dance before the Lord, people were just getting drunk in the Spirit. Just getting drunk in the Spirit. And every once in a while, it, I see that happen in some of the services sometimes. You know, I see that happen. Not very often, but every once in a while, and I'll see this angel pick this picture up and pour it out and it and it and it doesn't stop you know it's constantly pouring out and i and you can see the father and and the son sitting next to each other up there and it's just brilliant like rainbowish lights and it's just glorious and, and it's like this you know I, I can't explain it. it's just like this platform that's up there and the living creatures and these angels that are just pouring out these balls of living water and sometimes it would turn into liquid gold or liquid fire. And things would just change in the atmosphere. And the atmosphere just changes in His presence. And God is trying to bring us to this place where we begin to see what's going on in the Spirit. See. Sometimes I, I sense the angel of the Lord come up. One day I was in New Mexico and, and we were in this one room and people were chanting and I didn't like this chanting stuff and I walked out of the room and I went in the hallway like in the lobby and I got on my knees and I started praying in the spirit and worshiping the Lord and then all of a sudden I know an angel of the Lord comes up and puts his hand on me huge and him and I start worshiping the Lord you know it, it, I, these things are are true these things are there for me and you that's all you have to do is get in the spirit You've got to become a worshiper. You've got to thirst and hunger and love His presence more than anything. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Where are we at? <laughs> Proverbs 18. Glory to God. And verse 21. Would you read it with me? Is everybody there? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. The Bible says, He who sows to the Spirit reaps life. He who sows to the flesh reaps corruption. So you're sowing, and, and the word Spirit is capital. You know, reading your Bible strengthens your spirit. Worshiping the Lord is sowing in the Spirit. That's why the Bible says, the Word is a lamp unto our feet. And a what? light unto our path because it becomes a light unto your path as you speak the word but as you read the word you're strengthening your spirit you're strengthening your spirit so that you can worship everybody understand that you're increasing faith because faith comes by what? hearing the word of God so you can step in oh, hallelujah. so you have the choice of speaking life or speaking death sowing in the spirit or sowing in the flesh amen and that choice is what you do with this tongue. Psalm 47. One of the things the devil does not want you to do is get in God's presence. Oh, clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with the voice of triumph. 
For the Lord Most High is awesome. He is a great king over all the earth. He will subdue the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. He will choose our inheritance for us, the excellence of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our God, sing praises to our King, yes. For the God is the King of all the earth. Sing praises with understanding. Those who worship him in truth and in spirit have understanding. God reigns over the nations and sits on his holy throne. The princes of the people have gathered together, the people of God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is greatly exalted. Psalm 16 and verse 11. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Praise God. Fullness of joy. You know, the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So don't be a wimp. Get in his presence. You get joy. You get strength. Hallelujah. 1 Samuel 10. Oh, hallelujah. 1 Samuel chapter 10. Glory to God. In verse 1, now Saul had been chosen to become king, and he couldn't be king in the flesh. He was the first king. And Samuel took a flask of oil and poured it on his head and said, and kissed him and said, it is, not because, is it not because the Lord has anointed you commander over his inheritance? So Samuel begins to tell him what he needs to do before he can get in position. In verse 5 he says, after that, you shall come to the hill of God where the Philistine garrison is, and it will happen when you have come there to the city that you will meet a group of prophets coming down from the high place with string instruments, a tambourine, a flute, a harp before them, and they will be prophesying. Why? Because they're worshiping the Lord, is ushering in God's presence. Ushering in God's presence begins to manifest the gifts of the Spirit. He says, then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you. And you will prophesy with them and be turned into what? Another man. another man. Every time you get in God's presence, you be, get turned into another man more and more and more. Amen. Well, you may not feel it, but you'll know it. Remember, you can sit there and worship God all day. You're sowing in the Spirit. You're sowing in, But there's something when you begin to make a conscious effort. Do you understand that? It's like getting in the spirit, you must make that conscious effort. You must make that conscious effort to get in and fight to get in. It's not three songs and sit down and you've done your duty. It's not about duty. It's about death. Death. That's why there are some people who will never go out and cast out a devil because they'll still be led by their flesh. When they get unction to go pray, they'll never get that. They'll, they'll miss it because they're in the flesh. The only time they'll pray is when there's a need. And it's usually their own. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. In verse 3. Oh, we already went there. <laughs> Glory to God. Let's go to Samuel 16. 1 Samuel 16. Hey, man, this is free. Praise God. He paid the price. Now there's a price you must pay. Repent. Renounce and receive. <laughs> Process of healing. <laughs> Praise God. First Samuel 16, chapter four, or verse 14. Praise God. Would you read? Uh, let's see who is this. One. Verse 14. Now we know that Saul was disobedient, right? So Daddy chose another king to replace him, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David. And verse 14 it says, But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and the distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. Hey, listen. you got to be careful who you're fellowshipping with. When you resist the Holy Ghost, the distressing spirit is right there. And he's called a familiar spirit, and he loves to fellowship with you. It's his good pleasure to give you the kingdom of darkness. 
Oh, hallelujah. And Saul's servant said to him, Surely a distressing spirit from God is troubling you. Even his servants knew he picked up a demon. Let our master now command your servants who are before you to seek out a man who is a skillful player on a harp, and it shall be that he will play it with his hand when the distressing spirit from God is upon you, and you shall be well. This is powerful. Go to verse 23. So as it was when the spirit from God, that distressing spirit was upon Saul, that David would take a harp and play it with his hand, then Saul would become what? Refreshed, well or healed, and delivered. The distressing spirit would depart from him. So we see that a lot of things happen in God's presence, doesn't it? We talked about joy, strength. Talked about healing, deliverance, refreshing, gifts of the spirit, prophecy. Amen. Becoming a new individual. Amen. You're going from glory to glory in his presence. Oh, hallelujah. Go to chapter 17. And verse 32. Now David was a uh, young man. And uh, that Philistine Goliath was out there mocking God's army and God. And then uh, verse 32. Then David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fall because of him. Your servant will go and fight with the Philistine. He said, Hey, King Saul, I'll go fight since the rest of your army won't. <laughs> and Saul said to David, You are out of your mind. No. He said, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For you are a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. Oh, man, I wanted to do outreaches in the drug-infested areas, and I had the religious pastors come out. And tell me, you can't go against them. How long have you been a believer? When did you get saved? Who's this? Who's that? I share with them what happened to me. They said, that can't be. It's against the scripture. In other words, you couldn't get baptized in the Holy Ghost and pray in tongues. Of course, there were still drug-infested individuals all around their church. Some of them were probably sleeping on their parking lot. And still not getting healed. I'm sharing with you that only in the spirit are you able to take out the Goliath. In fact, you're looking for them. Hmm. In verse 34, But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of a flock, I went after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose again against me, I caught it by its beard and struck it and killed it. In the spirit, there is no fear. There's no fear in the spirit. One day, I uh, I was trying to uh, do some paperwork and make some copies and stuff. And In fact, we were doing some brochures in this place in Kinko's um, downtown. They, uh, they had my cassette and they were supposed to have stuff ready. And it's wild because that movie Matrix, you know, he's got this long black coat and it was cold out. And I had this long black coat on, you know, <laughs> and I and, and I and I go to this Kinko's to go pick up the stuff and they must have had a flood. You know, I, I, every, people were sitting around the lunch table and I really didn't notice what was going on. And I came up and I and I asked. And uh, of course, before I went in, I was binding the strong man and I, and I asked um, an individual, and they were sitting there, and one of these dudes turned around and gave me a real wise remark. And I felt the presence of the Lord come upon me of holy anger. I'm telling you, the power of God came upon me where I could have ripped people in half in that place. I had no fear. And the presence of God that came upon me was like, I, the only thing I can imagine was what came upon Samson. And everybody at the table turned around and looked at me. And the one guy bowed his head, not wanting to look at me. And that's all I did was I stood there. And they all turned their heads. And I'm telling you, I could feel the presence of God. I don't know how many angels were with me or whatever, but I had no fear. I mean, I knew, and I didn't have hatred. I just knew that power was all over me. All over me. And as I stood there and they looked at me, they turned their heads. I didn't know what to do. I just knew that the power of God was all over me in strength. And I turned around and walked out. And when I turned around and walked out, it lifted for me. And I thought, Lord. And he let me know that that's what was 
coming on Samson. Because the Bible says that the sevenfold of the Holy Spirit, one of them is a spirit of strength. Hello? Hello. Oh, hallelujah. And that's what happened with David. Amen. No fear. Right. Amen? No fear, right? Oh, hallelujah. Go to verse 41. So the Philistine came, began drawing near David, and the man who bore the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. In other words, he mocked him and stuff. And for he was only a youth, ruddy and good looking. The Philistine said to David, I am, a, am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Didn't matter what they said, did it? Those words had no penetration. And David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled, or defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the, camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. He wasn't playing games, man. I'm telling you, that's how I felt in this place in Kinko's. I didn't say a word, though. But the power and the strength of the Spirit of God came upon me, and man, it was like, whew. When I saw the Matrix movie, I thought, cool, man. I know what that's about. Hallelujah. Second Chronicles, chapter 20. A couple more scriptures, and we're out of here. Praise God. In verse 1. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. In verse 1. It happened after that, the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them, besides the Ammonites, came to against Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah. He was totally outnumbered. He could not physically, naturally fight and win this war. Amen. In verse 3 it says, And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim the fast throughout Judah. So Judah gathered together, asked help from the Lord, and from all the cities of Judah they came to seek the Lord. And when you seek God, he sends his spirit to give you counsel, correction, and direction. Either through someone, through his word, through dream, through revelation, through vision, through something, he's going to give you direction. And the, and the prophet, he sent the prophet to them, he told them what to do. In fact, he told them to position themselves. He told them that the battle was the Lord's. He said, don't fear. Amen. In verse 20. So they arose early in the morning, went out in the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Here, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should what? Sing, Sing to the Lord, and, the, and who should what? Praise, Praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army, and we're saying, come on, they went out before the army. Yeah. Try and tell our armies that. Yeah. Try and tell our commanders, hold on, we're sending a praise and worship team out ahead of them. <laughs> <laughs> they try and give you the stuff between, you know, state and religion, you know, church and state or whatever. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, send the church out first. <laughs> praise God, victory had been over with. And they went out saying, Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. And when they began to sing and praise the Lord, the Lord sent ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, Mount Sirah, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. Let me share with you as you praise and worship the Lord. Here's another thing about getting in his presence. He will ambush your enemies. Amen. He's going to ambush your enemy, man. For the people of Ammon Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Sira to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants, they helped them destroy one another. Man, they talk about confusion in the camp. So when Judah came to the place overlooking the wilderness, they looked toward the multitude, and there were their dead bodies fallen on the earth. No one had escaped. No one. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away their spoil, they found among them an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies, precious jewelry, which they had stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away, and they were there three days gathering the spoil because there was so much. Hey, there's blessing in his presence. Amen. It may not come the way you expect, 
but there's blessing and promises in his presence. Go to Acts 16. Oh, there's a lot of things that happen as you praise the Lord. Acts 16. You can't give up, though, can you? No, you got to keep going. You got to keep pressing in. In verse 25. Now, Paul and Silas were in jail, being persecuted. They were locked up, bound up, chained up. Hello? But at midnight, Saul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. They were praising the Lord, even in their circumstance. Amen? Praising the Lord, even in their circumstance. You know, that's when you really find out where you're at. If you're able to praise the Lord in your worst circumstance. Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loosed. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes your praise and worship releases others. Amen. See, the purpose of this ministry is to bring people in God's presence so they can get free. Man cannot free anybody. Only his presence can. Oh, hallelujah. And the keeper of the prison awakening from sleep, yeah, I bet, and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisons, prisoners had left, drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he knew he was going to get killed anyways. <clears throat> but Paul called with a loud voice saying, Do yourself no harm, for we are all here. He must have freaked. <laughs> Man, these guys are too honest. What are they doing in jail? Then he called for a light, ran and fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. Oh, how God turned your enemies to come with you instead of against you. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what my, what my must do to get saved? So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You will be saved in your household. Oh, man, do you understand that praise and worship not only ambushes your enemies, but releases you, makes a way of escape from your trouble makes a way of escape from your trouble and brings freedom of bondages. One of the greatest bondages people have is trying to worship. What if somebody sees me? Praise God. What if you get healed? Then let somebody see you. Amen? Amen. 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 I want to close at Psalm 103. Hallelujah. Don't care what people think. Come on, we didn't care what people thought when we were out there serving the devil. And I used to go to those football games and those basketball games and soccer games and worship that pigskin, screaming like crazy. Yeah, whoa, 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 yo. <laughs> it comes to worshiping the Lord, all of a sudden people turn silent. Silent night. Silent lips. Psalm 103. Oh, hallelujah. We have great, great reason to celebrate. Mm -hmm. Great reason. Now you got to remember something. It's just, it's about a choice, isn't it? It's about a choice. That's all it is, man. Just make the choice. Don't go by what you feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but man, I'm just getting all beat up. So what? Get unbeat. Get in his presence. Hallelujah. Yeah, but you don't know my circumstance. God does. Man doesn't need to know it. God needs. God knows it. Amen. Let him work on you. Read this with me. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Well, how do you bless him? Praise and worship. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Praise God. We all need a little renewing. Amen. Amen. Worship and expression of reverence to the creator of all. Worship. Never stop ministering to the Lord. When you begin to compromise it, you've already bit the bait. Worship. As a believer, it is one of the most important things for me and you to do is to worship the Lord. Amen? Amen. Brings you in God's presence, and we just read a lot of things that happen in God's presence. But again, I want to encourage you to read, to let's get the tape, Spiritual Warfare number 7. It's about the warfare of praise and worship. Amen? Amen? Father, we thank you for your word. We love you. We exalt you. And we ask, Holy Spirit, that our spirit would worship you even as we sleep tonight. 
that we would wake up refreshed, healed, full of joy, and that the rivers of living water will flow through us for your glory. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen, Amen and hallelujah.